In the wake of my video on Friday concerning Billy Graham, I have been asked a very good question. And it concerns Billy Graham's belief. Now, I have said before that the essential belief of the gospel of the circumcision. Now, if you don't know, if you don't know what I mean by circumcision, there are two gospels in the New Testament. The gospel of the circumcision, which God brought to Israel through Abraham. And the gospel of the uncircumcision. Paul is the head of that. It's a gospel that went to the nations. Two different gospels. Read Galatians 2.7. Paul says that Peter has been entrusted with the gospel of the circumcision according as I have been entrusted with the gospel of the uncircumcision. Two different sets of belief. The main teaching of the circumcision gospel is that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. Very simple, isn't it? Not so fast. Because the point was brought up to me, Martin, Billy Graham believes Jesus is the Messiah. Well, let me ask you this. Does Satan believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? Yeah, he sure does. Satan believes that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And in that respect, Satan is a lot smarter than Christians. Does Satan believe that God is sovereign? Yes, he does. I believe so. So what's the difference then? How can someone... For one thing, am I saying that Satan is going to be in the 1,000-year kingdom because he believes that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel? Jesus, uh, Satan for sure believes in the death of Christ. And again, in this, he is smarter than most Christians who don't actually believe that Jesus Christ died. They believe that his body died, but that he didn't because they think that he is God the Father, even though Jesus called himself the Son of God. I'm just trying to believe Scripture here. So Satan believes in the death of Christ. Is Satan in the body of Christ? Satan believes that Jesus Christ died for sin. That's an essential belief of Paul's teaching. Is Satan then in the body of Christ? Of course not. But do you know why he's not in the body of Christ, even though he believes these essential teachings of both Gospels? The Gospel of the uncircumcision, of course, being that Jesus Christ died for our sin, was entombed, and was raised the third day. It's really quite simple, even though it sounds complicated. It's like, yeah, Billy Graham believes that and Satan believes that. Billy Graham and Satan, they're both in the kingdom. Well, let's take a look at Romans chapter 10. Seems simple, but I need to bring up an important point. All my points are important, by the way. Paul, Romans 10, verse 1. Indeed, brethren, the delight of my heart and my petition to God for their sake, that is, for the sake of Israel, is for salvation. The desire of my heart, my petition to God for their sake, is for salvation. So as Paul is dictating this, Israel's not saved because the desire of his heart is for them to be saved. So obviously, as he's dictating this, they're not saved. For I am testifying to them that they have a zeal of God. They're all about God. They talk about God. They're excited. They're zealous. The Jews mentioned the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Jews of Jesus' day were zealous for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yet they killed their own Messiah. How can this be? This is why. For I am testifying to them they have a zeal of of God, but not in accord with recognition. There's a recognition chip missing. For Billy Graham, there's a recognition chip there, but there's also a bigger recognition chip missing. Satan has the recognition chip. It's a small chip, very 
very tiny, uh, but that doesn't matter nowadays. Tiny can be powerful. Let's say it's it's got really not very many circuits. It's not very powerful. Not in accord with recognition. Let me just let Paul elaborate on this in verse 3. For they, here's the key, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness were not subjected to the righteousness of God. There it is. The Jews, even though they recognized Abraham, even though they recognized the prophets, they were ignorant of the righteousness of God. And this is Satan's flaw, and it's Billy Graham's flaw. It's Billy. It, this is what hangs Billy Graham. This is what hangs Satan. They're ignorant of the righteousness of God, of the goodness of God, of the love of God, of what God does and who God is. You can point and say, that's God. Or you can point over here and say, that's Jesus Christ. But do you know who Jesus Christ is? And there's another verse in 2 Corinthians 11 that's a shocker. I'm going to get to that. He is love. He is righteousness. But they can't recognize God as righteousness. And here's why. The killer is still coming. For they, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness. There it is. Seeking to establish, to dig in, to prove, to attest to their own righteousness. And this, was, this is a problem with Satan. He wants his own righteousness. Righteousness. He can recognize things. He can say, yeah, Jesus did that. Jesus did that. But what stands in the way is this, this rabid, foaming at the mouth need to be someone in your own estimation, in your own estimation, to stand apart from God, to be independently righteous. So whenever one is seeking to establish one's own righteousness, they are not subjected to the righteousness of God. They don't want to be subject. They're in subject. And Satan is in subject. He's in, in subjection to the righteousness of God. Why? Because he's got this other agenda. Same with Billy Graham. That's right. I'm comparing Billy Graham to Satan. And I'm comparing most Christians to Satan. They're seeking to establish something about themselves that is good, and they're doing it apart from God, apart from God, apart from the influence of God, apart from the work of God. There's another name for this. It's a common term. It's called human free will. That's what it's called. Free will is seeking to establish one's own righteousness. Free will is being not subjected to the righteousness of God. You're not going to subject yourself to it. You can put it in holy terms. You can sanctify it by using theological terms, lay myself down, yield myself. to. But you're not yielding yourself. If you want to yield yourself, drop the satanic teaching of human free will. Human free will is independence of God and it is a self-seeking righteousness. And because you're busy doing this, you are ignorant of the righteousness of God. Anyone who embraces and forwards the teaching of human free will is ignorant of the righteousness of God. That includes Satan and Billy Graham and Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. Always like to bring her in there who strained to produce a righteousness that she, in her own mind, could then barter for salvation. That's the Christian message, as I've been saying, and I keep repeating because this is so important. I'm just giving you now a verse. 
and I'm giving you the reason now why lip service. And Jesus said that of the Pharisees. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There's the thing. The heart. Even Satan could honor Jesus with his lips. Yeah, you're the Christ. Yeah, you're the Messiah. Yeah, you died for the sins of the world. You're the sovereign of the universe. It's lip service because your heart is far from him. And any human heart, or a satanic heart for that matter, is far from God, which seeks to establish its own righteousness. Now listen to verse 4. I'm in Romans 10. For Christ, and this is the same one, this, this is the Christ who is the head of the circumcision in his Jew suit, the same Christ that in his glory as a light brighter than the sun is the head of the uncircumcision. For Christ is the consummation of law. Christ is the consummation of law for righteousness to everyone who is believing. There is much more than just saying it, than just recognizing, recognizing it. It being what Christ is, what Christ did, what God is. It's believing it. Satan believes it, but he doesn't believe it. You see the difference? He believes it. He acknowledges it, but he doesn't believe it. Because he may honor God and Christ with his lips, as Jesus said, but the heart is far away from God and from Christ. For Christ is the consummation of law. If you see Christ, and if you recognize the righteousness of Christ, then that's the end. That's law. Christ completed the law. So even a Jew who even believes in his or her heart that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel and is not seeking to establish his or her own righteousness, that person will realize that law is consummated, that Jesus Christ fulfilled it. They can't fulfill it anymore. How the heck can a Jew today embrace the circumcision evangel? By doing just what I said, embracing it, waiting for it. They can't go to the temple because there is no temple. They can't do the sacrifices because, again, there's no temple. And any good Jew would not be seeking to establish his or her own righteousness. They would recognize in Christ the righteousness of God and say, well, psh, we can't fulfill law, but he did. That's not the Christian confession. Let's get away from law for now. We can't do any righteous act that would please God. Therefore, pff, we're undone. There you go. That's saving faith. That's saving faith. It's that simple and that complicated. The reason it's complicated is because Satan himself has put the tripwire of human free will in the way of giving up the pursuit of one's own righteousness. That's a really difficult thing for human beings to do. And Satan knows that because he himself is the consummate free willer. He's the consummate, I did this, I will do that. I will raise myself above. And it doesn't have to be overt. It doesn't have to be the pride such as Nebuchadnezzar as he's strolling along his parapet saying, is this not Babylon the Great, which I have built by the might of my strength and my power and this and that and this and that. Billy Graham and other Christians are of the disposition that as long as they're not overtly boasting, as long as they're not overtly proud, as long as they're not strutting upon their parapets, that they're in good shape. No, 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 they're not in good shape. They're in terrible shape because the pride is within. The pride is that knowledge that I established my own righteousness. And the proof of it, I like to talk about proof, is that the law is not consummated for them. They're still saying, obey the laws of God. The law is not consummated for them. And that proves, Romans 10, 1 through 4, that they're not subject to the righteousness of God. If they were, 
then they would see in Christ the consummation of the law for righteousness to everyone who is believing. But they're blinded. They're blinded to the righteousness of God. In sending his son to the cross to take on sin. You can't take on sin. You can't even believe your way out of sin. The righteousness of God is the wisdom of God in deciding that this is how sin will be eradicated. Christians say, no, 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 this is not how sin's going to be eradicated. Sin's going to be eradicated for me personally when I believe in God. When you believe in God, ooh, sounds like you're seeking to establish your own righteousness. And it can be that, it can be and is that subtle it's that little smug feeling that I'm going to heaven, they're going to hell because I gave my life to Christ. Boom. You're disqualified for both evangels. Paul's talking about circumcision here in Romans 10. Seeking to establish your own righteousness. That will hang anybody. It'll hang somebody straining to get into the Israel gospel, it will hang anyone straining to get into the gospel of the uncircumcision. That's the killer, seeking to establish your own righteousness. You know who puts that into people's hearts? The prince of darkness.